If this is you struggling to finish Glide to Chocobo, then you've come to the right place. Instead of a talking head intro, this fail montage was just too good not to use. Welcome back to Gatabud, I'm glad you're here. This minigame probably takes the cake for the hardest minigame I've found so far. This video covers all three training courses. You need to get rank three in all three of the mini games for Johnny Seaside Inn for the Platinum Trophy requirement. The precision required to get a perfect score on the third iteration is borderline robotic, and I'm sure you are struggling with that. If you don't get the final dive absolutely perfect, you just won't make it to the upper of the two finishing circles. And that's after you've already done a perfect run to begin with that has its own challenges. The controls are clunky, but they're actually workable, and I have some methods to get around that. No matter what, don't get frustrated and don't give up. I'm here to help. You can do this. To get started on this mini game, you have to accept the quest, and this can be done immediately upon arrival in Cosmo Canyon. Just head to this marker and speak to Kamaria to get the ball rolling. If you've not already captured the Chocobo yet, you need to go ahead and capture Apony. It's time for round one of Glide to Chocobo. And before we get started, I wanna go over some fundamentals that are really important. You want to hold your DualSense controller in your right hand like this with your thumb pinching your fingers down here because you want to keep your thumb as far away from this right stick as possible because after playing this game for dozens of hours you're going to want to press the stick to look around do whatever instinctively and you simply just cannot do this okay you have to keep your thumb locked that's my number one tip for all three rounds of this then with your other hand you hold it normally and we will be playing it like this okay one joystick that's it Giddy up, girl. okay we are holding our controllers like this with our right hand your right hand is going to stay stationary like this this entire run okay we're steering with our left hand and we just want to hit every circle on this introductory course if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're struggling with round two or three, but I'm not going to make assumptions. I'm going to cover this as well. For all I know, you might be struggling with round one, and that's okay. I'm glad you're here. This is very straightforward. You just want to hit every circle and then hit the updraft. We want to keep the motion sensor function disabled by clicking L3. Your screen should look like mine. Although if you're sitting still, the motion sensor function won't even really do anything, but it's still good to have disabled. The only bit of finesse I'd recommend is doing a little bit of a zigzag in case you have a little too much altitude. You see how I was a little close there? If you enter a dive here, you need to dive just a little bit, but not too much where you lose enough altitude for this, and then boom, you release the trigger to land at the end. Don't try to dive into it. Just release the trigger and you will fall. And that is a perfect score of 3,600, and you will get Yuffie's weapon as your rank 3 reward and go to the next step of this quest. The second round is a significant increase in difficulty. First things first, when to start. There are moving targets in this and I've found that this winnable path is just starting immediately. I have messed around with waiting a couple seconds and what I found is some of the movable targets will be too high later on in the process and it's just too difficult to get right. To win round two you need to do three dives good but not perfect. The key to doing a good dive is to line up properly and the way that I do that is the circles that I want to hit, I want to see them all inside of the first circle I would hit in the dive. Except for this first one, it's a little less steep 
so this one's a little more murky, but most of the steep ones do this. Now let's say you didn't line up perfectly. You can do some slight adjustments as long as you're still firmly holding down on the joystick and you just tilt it slightly to the left or the right. You'll still maintain your dive and you'll still maintain the accumulation of being able to ascend back up. The next thing I do is to ascend when I hit the joystick up. I hold down up until the chocobo will no longer climb any higher. This is very important. If you release early, then you're going to not have as much altitude and you're going to fail. I want you to focus on mastering the fundamentals here and you will have success once you do. If you've been watching the whole video, I apologize for being redundant, but people like to skip to the part they're interested in. So I need to reiterate the proper way to hold this controller, okay? You want to take your right hand and begin to hold the controller like this. Make a fist, keep your thumb pinching these two fingers, and then hold the R2 trigger just like this to maintain flight, okay? And you want to keep this thumb right here the entire time because you're going to want to try to look around or do something else and it's just going to screw everything up. So don't use your right thumb. You will be steering the bird exclusively by using your left thumb like so. And that's how we're going to fly through this. First things first, you need to start properly here. You want the 500 circles to be on top of each other and wait about a quarter second after they pass to begin to hold R2. Luckily, this is the only tricky part of the opening part of this course. You're just trying to tag every circle doing some very steep turns. If you need to look around, you can actually hit pause and use photo mode to help you better visualize the path, but you can't use the looking stick to look around mid-flight. And when you do pause, you need to keep holding R2 when you unpause or you're gonna fall out of the sky. As long as you hit every circle, what you do in this opening part really doesn't matter as far as altitude because you're just gonna hit an updraft and get back to maximum altitude and have a clean slate. So this is the forgiving part. This double dive is literally the exact same thing as the round two. So this should be automatic at this point. If you skipped my explanation of how to hold a controller properly for a good dive and part two where I went over dive fundamentals. If you're struggling with this portion, I recommend you just rewatch those parts because these two dives are the exact same thing that we had to do in part two. Now this next part, on the other hand, this is where things get kind of weird and unfamiliar. And once you kind of break this down, it becomes a lot easier. But as you remember, we had to start in a very specific time. So these circles will always look the same. And what you want to do is fly through the first circle and then start to enter a very controlled dive just to lose some altitude. And your goal is to hit the third circle square on the 300 number and then stop diving and then just fly forward. And then the fourth circle will descend into you. And once you get this down, this starts to get really easy. But you might have a couple of attempts where you kind of mess this part up. And now the final part. I probably got 9100 as my final score at least a dozen times before I got this perfect. This beginning part is all about the preservation of altitude. You want to be hitting especially the 500s at the very top of the circle and make sure you are as high as possible to give yourself every inch to make it to the finish. And then once you've done your little miniature zigzag course, you need to enter the dive at the very top of the 300 circle and you need to exit the dive at basically a perfect moment where 
you begin to ascend through that bottom 500 and you want to level out and hit the final 300 circle at or above the numbers on the furthest right side possible to give you every inch to try to glide to that finishing area with the two horizontal 500s. If you get this dive absolutely perfect, and I mean absolutely perfect, you will make it and you will hit the upper horizontal 500, and then you just release the trigger and declare victory. I don't think I've fist bumped and screamed this loud at a game in a very long time, and it's a great thing I had my microphone off because that footage would have been rough on the ears. Now, I know I kind of cut in and out and I sped things up, sped things down, so I am going to rerun the entire round three without any slowdowns, any edits, anything whatsoever, so that for your viewing convenience, you can rewatch this in real time. I just didn't feel like I could get this audio and explain everything effectively without slowing it down and being able to break this thing down frame by frame. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found it enjoyable and even slightly humorous. After you win this, I want you to go to the comments and share any tips that you might have that I might not have covered. I'd love to hear everyone else's perspective. We're all in this together, and that's the point of this community. So please share with me what you did to get over the hump here. And if you found this helpful, please hit that subscribe button. I am so close to getting monetized if y'all just press that button. It'd be so helpful to me. Thank you so much to tuning in to Gatabud. Good luck. Don't give up on this. I promise you're going to win. You just got to be persistent and keep trying. Look for my full Cosmo Canyon walkthrough in the coming days, and it will be linked here once it's done.